Hey, good morning, fourth grade. All right, we only have two lessons of chapter five left, and then that is it. All right, so today we're talking about prime and composite numbers. So a prime number is a whole number that's got to be greater than one, and it has exactly two factors, one and itself. So for example, seven. One times seven is the only way you can multiply numbers to get seven. So seven would be prime. A composite number is a whole number greater than one that has more than two factors. So for example, nine, you can do one times nine or you can do three times three. So it's got one, three and nine as factors. So it would be composite. You can use your divisibility rules from earlier in the chapter to help you decide if those if these numbers are prime or composite. So I hope that you did what I said the other day and you either screenshot it or took a picture of the divisibility rules when they were on the screen. Um, if not, you probably need to go back to that lesson. It was 5.2 from last Tuesday and go ahead and take a picture of those to help you with um, this lesson here. Okay, so in order to figure out if a number is prime or composite, we've got to look at the factors themselves first. So let's look at 12 and 13 and see if we can figure out which is prime or composite. So let's go ahead and list our factors of 12. What are some ways we can multiply numbers together to get 12? Good, we always start with one. We can do one times 12. What else can we do? Mm -hmm. We can do two times six, and then there's one other way. Think, 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 one times 12, two times six, and what is one other way that we can do? Very good, three times four. So for factors of 12, we've got one, two, three, four, six, and 12. Now, what about 13? What's one way we can multiply and get 13? Very good, always start with one. So we've got one times 13. Is there any other ways that we can multiply factors together to get 13? No, there is not. It is just one and 13. So 12 would be what, prime or composite? Very good, 12 is composite because it has more than just two factors. It has one, two, three, four, five, six factors. 13 would be what? Yes, 13 would be prime because why? Yes, because it has exactly two factors, just one and 13. Very good. All right, let's look at these numbers down here and use some of our divisibility rules to decide if they are prime or composite. All right, so let's look at 18. And using some of our divisibility rules, we have divisibility rules for two, three, five, six, and nine on um, that divisibility rules chart. So let's start with two. Can two go into 18 evenly? Yes, it can. This right here is even, which tells us that two is going to work. Now, let me tell you a little secret. The second you figure out another factor other than one and that number itself, that, uh, that number is automatically composite because this number that you're finding the divisibility rule for is factor number three. Every number has one and itself, but the second that you find even one more factor that works, that number is automatically composite. You don't even have to go through this whole list. They're not asking you for the factors. They're asking you if the number is prime or composite. So because two will work for 18, that number is automatically composite. All righty, let's move on to 29. We've got two, three, five, six, and nine. Okay, is two going to work for 29? No, why not? Yeah, because it's not even. So two is not going to work. What is our divisibility rule for three? Yes, if we add two and nine together, this number needs to be divisible by three. Is 11 divisible by three? No, it is not. So three is not going to work. What about five? Is five going to work? 
Nope. Why not, boys and girls? Tell me why not. Very good. This is not a zero or a five. So five is not going to work. What about six? What is my divisibility rule for six? Right, if it's divisible by six, it has to be divisible by two and three. Is it divisible by two and three? No, it is not. So that means it is not divisible by six. All right, what about nine? What's my rule for nine? Yeah, we add those together. Two plus nine equals 11. Is 11 divisible by nine? No, it is not. All right, let's go just a little bit higher. Is 10 going to work here? No. Is 11? No, remember 11s are always gonna be doubles. What about 12? Nope. 13? No, and now we're getting too high to multiply into this. So 29 is going to be prime because all it has is one and itself. All right, let's move on over on to 52. We've got two, three, five, six, and nine. We already know to start off, we've got one times 52. So there's two of its factors. What about two? Will two go into 52 evenly? Yes, how do we know? Very good, because this two is even. So two is going to work. So do I even need to go through this whole list? No, I do not. Not unless they're asking me for factors. So because I have found even with just one more factor, this number is going to be composite. All right, guys, that is it for today. Um, make sure that you are always checking your folders for any assignments. We have one more math lesson for this chapter and then your chapter test is on Friday. All right, guys, have a great afternoon and I will see you back here um, tomorrow for more.